works. Yeah, there it goes. Now I can see it. It wasn't live on the other one. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So I'm going to share it to my home page. Or wait, yeah. I am on my home page, aren't I? What's up? If you're jumping in, awesome. I'm here with Aaron Opog. I am pulling up this so I can see it. So if you have a comment, this is a good news interview with Aaron Opog. Pumped, Ooh. pumped to be with him. I've got a little background music I'm going to turn on. <laughs> Can you hear it all right? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. That way we put a little, uh, uh, you know, this is modern day interviews. I still can't even see where the, I don't even know where it went. I know it's going on here somewhere, but I don't know where it went. I'm going to try and get it on my phone so I can comment. If you have any comments or questions, there we go. Can I join you on Zoom? Zoom. Nick Bryant. This guy was in my youth group in Sacramento. No, Nick. Sorry, man. I can't pull you in here because I'm having some important conversation here with Aaron. First and foremost, I want to know how is the family dealing with quarantine life? Yeah, uh, doing okay. Uh, I would say, uh, as we were talking earlier, um, that have, having structure is good. Uh, multitasking is bad. Uh, we Anytime we start multitasking, it's like men, my mental map and our, our emotions, it just starts running high. So, we, you know, you know, I'm sure other everybody else is dealing with the same thing with the multitasking of work and kids and, and being stuck inside. Yeah. Um, that, though, it's been actually it's been a blessing. Chris and I have really tried to recognize we, we almost um, I probably shouldn't say this. We almost were like, hey, um, if like, we were we we were really close to just like like to, by by way of volunteer. OK, by volunteer. OK, we're watching this for Friends Church. Um, uh, 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 not taking a pay uh, for a month to help out any kind of financial issues. And then just uh -huh. going on the road and camping uh, in like every national park on the West coast. And, and like, shut them down. teaching our kids, like teaching our kids, you know, like real life lessons and stuff and doing homeschool, like while we're like traveling, we yeah. were like, we like had a meeting at that table for like an hour, like Zion, Bryce, like, okay, I know, you know, this will help out the church, but, you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And then, and then like, and then, and then all the grand, all the big good national parks just started shutting down like the I, next day. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, like, that, I was, I was like, dude, I'm like just a month of no pay that could hurt. That could hurt, you know, yeah. but it would help other people. And, uh, and we just jumped in, uh, we were going to jump out and, and do that, but we're home. We're not going to Grand Canyon and we're not going to Bryce. So we're I wonder, Bryce right here. I wonder if that will be the first thing that opens back up or the last thing. Well, I, my buddies were like, um, uh, just go when the park rangers aren't there, man. Like if, if they're going to get furloughed from the government for any kind of thing, just go. And I'm like, ah, I, I can't, I can't do that, man. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Not gonna do that. But that would have been sweet. Like a whole month to like be kind of like a hippie yeah. for a month and just teach my kids about like, how to make a camp and uh, campsite and go hike and all that would have been rad. Well, if giving goes down, man, you might be furloughed anyway. So you can <laughs> have the opportunity. <laughs> might be a blessing. I know, man. Well, I'm like, this is the reality, dude. That's the reality. Yeah. I, I know I saw some numbers and Friends Church has been pretty awesome. People are still giving, but yeah. some churches I'm sure are struggling through this time. I know. I know. It's a, it's, it's hit and miss and I'm thankful for the generosity of our church members so yeah it matters um the housing crisis a ton of people lost their jobs in ministry mm -hmm. um and then the after 9 11 same thing so this could be another one of those moments unless people are gonna keep doing what the bible says dang it right all right let's move on so what's the coolest family moment you've experienced so far so uh, it on on during the coronavirus time or yeah uh, no quarantine time yeah time. So it, it happened the same night a few weeks ago. My, my son, he's five, and he's he's very spiritually interested, you know. And so we were reading a book on heaven by um, this 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 author. And um, afterwards, I said to him, well, he said to me, he said, this is really cool. He said, Dad, how do I know uh, I'm going to go to heaven? You know, and it's kind of the moment, like, every parent's praying for is like, yeah, that's you know, cool. So and we were, we're laying in bed and we're talking. It's super sweet. And, 
and I shared with him how we can go to heaven and, and, you know, and, and know Jesus now. And I said, and he said, and then all of a sudden he kind of got like aware that he was in a very vulnerable conversation. And he said, Oh, I know, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. And I go, I'm like, that's so good. I'm so glad that you worship Jesus. So that was like the coolest, the coolest thing. But wow. then like a minute later, this was just funny. Um, he goes, I don't worship Jesus. And I'm like, what? And he goes, <laughs> He goes, he's been reading the Old Testament, okay? Because we, like, not like the real one, but the, the kids' version. Okay. I still don't know how we learned this language. He goes, he goes, I worship false gods. I worship false gods. <laughs> like, where did you learn all that phrase, false gods? I'm like, I'm like, no, we don't, we don't say that, okay? And he's like smiling. He's, he's just egging me on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, no, no, we worship Jesus. He goes, I know, I worship Jesus. And I'm like, and that was the end of it. So, like, it was pretty silly, but um, but the sweet moment of getting to explain Jesus and the gospel to my five year old was probably one of the best uh, moments we've had so far. It's pretty cool. So it's so funny. A couple months ago, I I was getting out of the shower and I would I showered downstairs for some reason. I don't know why. And so I'm downstairs next to his room, and when I get out of the shower, I'm looking at a towel, and my son calls me in his room and goes, "Hey, how do you hear?" god like how do you hear his voice mm. and i'm like okay well i'm in a towel but uh i guess we're having this talk <laughs> so i sit down and we have like an hour conversation about how you hear god when you're reading the word i'm like this is so funny it's just That's awesome it's so random sometimes yeah you, we you have know, these moments no and i think that's how Kristen and i tried to like embrace this time is like seeing it as a real opportunity to disciple our kids in a very unique way yeah um, my daughter, actually, this will be this will be the sweetest moment. Number two, really close to that moment, my wife was talking to my daughter two days ago, putting her to sleep, and she said, um, "My wife said to her, um, how are you doing? Um, I can't. I, I, I'm really hoping we can get back to your normal routine with going to school.'" And my daughter said to her, "Mom, I don't want to go back to the normal routine. I like this." And it was like, she so loves having mom and dad and her brother here all the time, you know, yeah. so it's pretty cool. That is really cool. I, I'm, yeah, I'm hearing that a lot with not only kids, but parents too, that are just like, this has been kind of special to be able to eat and have dinners with our kids that we were on the rush all the time before. And, you know, it's just, God's really, God's moving in this time. In fact, let me jump to this because I heard a story about this weekend and you, but what has God been doing uh, just in your life through this time? Yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously the family stuff, um, I would say what Jesus has been teaching me for a long time, but even more so now is um, health, spiritual health over impact, you know, um, and I think that's kind of been a theme for a lot of people in ministry is like kind of even though in a weird way, it's gotten a little bit more stressful because we've all had a shift to online and, you know, the, the, all the new technology and stuff that was kind of there for personal purposes, but now is there for ministry purposes and how to navigate that has been been stressful. But I would say, you know, spiritual health and emotional health over over impact has been probably the thing that God keeps bringing me back to again and again, you know, the last several months, but also especially right now is the importance of, of the priorities in ministry. One, one pastor said um, the pressure brings about the right priorities and it shows you your priorities. And I think that has rung true a lot is the pressure of the moment has really made what really is important stand out more. So, you know, family, prayer, uh, you know, purity of worship, uh, all those things has come into more contrast for me in the last couple of, of weeks, which has been cool. And I, I would say, I would add to that, even like long-term vision, I don't know what it is about. I'd, I would be really curious um, for other leaders you talk to, but in, in this time, I've really had a lot more clarity on per, my own personal vision of what do I want out of life? What, what opportunities are, are, is this creating out there? What opportunities of ministry am I seeing that I'm excited about? I think it's gone back to kind of personal vision uh, of where I, I 
I, my calling and all of that as well, you know? Yeah, totally. And I, what I'm hearing from people is they press in kind of what you're talking about with spiritual health, but finally having enough time to stop and go, why am I in this? What was my original purpose to even be doing this? And a lot of people are reinventing, like, I'm here to like share Christ with people. And I got really dis distracted with programs and church and, and just all the stuff that comes with that. Whereas people now are really pressing into what's the bottom line. We're here to share the message of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. And then they push beyond, like, if people don't ever come back to your building, I'm still called to reach people with the message of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so they're really pressing into that. I love, I love even hearing that from you, but I have seen that God's really moving. How have you seen God move in this time, even beyond yourself and even the church and what it's doing? Yeah. Well, I, I think unity is the, is what I'm seeing. The biggest theme is churches. I mean, the, the first three days of all this happening, I, I was getting text messages. I was text messaging a number of other leaders and churches around the area. Like, what are you doing? What are you using? And it was just like, everyone was just like open-handed about like, Hey, here's what we're, here's our plan. Here's everything. And now, you know, there's no, I think that's common all the time, but um, it was so heightened. It, it made such an impact on me. Um, but outside of the unity among Christians, obviously there, there just seems to be a spiritual hunger and desire that and a willingness that people have that's more open uh, than before. I mean, in terms of non-Christians anyway, um, my neighbors, uh, almost all of them, I've had some sort of passing spiritual conversation in the last two weeks. And the, the phrase, I'm praying for you, takes on a whole new meaning, I think, to them now than yeah. you do. So there's a real spiritual, you know, you know, in Jesus words, the, the harvest is plentiful right now. Yeah. Um, I think he's recruiting more harvest workers. I think God is, is, is reminding people, Hey, you can be a harvest worker too. Don't get bogged down by all the other stuff. This is what it's all about. Um, Cause the harvest is plentiful. Have you noticed, like, I'm not sure if you run, but when you're out, at first people were the same where you just kind of run by each other and you're in the moment. But now I have noticed that when I'm running, people like look at each other and wave and smile and almost like there's this yeah. kinship difference of, Hey, we're in this together Yeah. as, as quick as running by someone, but there's a, there's a different spirit going on. There is. I mean, there are people in my neighborhood who are like putting signs up in in the public spaces you can't go to anymore that are like, you're valuable, you're important, you matter. Like just these random signs, like these like billboard, like little 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 lawn signs. We're like, they're not even Christian. They're just people like trying to encourage each other. Yeah. You know? So there is something different. What's up with the uh, the Christmas lights? Do you know? I about think people are just bored. I mean. <laughs> well, I, 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 someone can comment on this later on. Yeah. Explain to us the Christmas lights because I've heard it has to do with hope. That's what I've heard. Oh, I haven't heard that. I have heard that for Easter, people are putting up either like a palm tree or a, a red scarf or something. Like they're trying to make the Easter sort of like the door Passover oh. moment, but with either a palm or a tree or something. Do they know the whole story in Exodus of what happened to the people who didn't do that? Man, I don't know if I, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I debated whether or not I was even going to do it because I'm like, <laughs> I like the concept. And if everybody jumps on board, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I, I want to be able to explain the whole story. And yeah. I don't know. Anyway, hey, different subject. Yeah, yeah. I heard did, did 65 people accept Christ this weekend. Yeah, so cool. Uh, actually, 72. 72. Wow. Yeah, so we, 72 people, Matthew, gave an invitation to receive Christ. And um, we had a text thread kind of response for people that they could text and commit. Wow. And and then they would get an automatic response from our, our system. And I was managing all of that and making sure that it was, you know, happening and all of that. 
Um, my kids are at the door right now. They're is that what it is? I thought maybe it's had not, it's not the mail. Yeah, <laughs> another ding. They're over there. An uh, angel just sprouted its wings. <laughs> no, they're messing around. Um, so uh, we did like this automation thing where people send, you know, I commit, and then it was automatically responded to like, awesome, there's a Bible verse. Can you tell us your name? They gave us a name. And then we responded back, can you give us your email so we can uh, register you for um, uh, a online follow-up discussion? And we had uh, 40 people respond back for the online discussion and 72 people say they committed and tell us their name and they want to be in conversation with us on a text thread. Did so, you do the response for 40? Uh, I'm, we're, yes, my, my follow-up team right now is calling everybody right now. Yeah, oh, we're, doing, we're doing it all right now. Um, really cool. I mean, a couple of stories came in. Um, this one guy, one of my guys uh, called and he said that he uh, uh, had come to Christ, accepted Jesus for the very first time. Uh, my follow-up guy assured him of his faith from 1 John 5. And then um, the man said he wanted to get baptized immediately with him and his daughter as soon as they could. And how could they do that? And so Man, that's, that's, as, that's as immediate as you can get. Like, is that, want, would you yeah. say that's the biggest weekend since you have been at Friends of that kind of commitment? Yeah, I'm, it, I've been at Friends, you know, 13 years between interning and my current stint, my first, my second time. And I've never seen um, a a public response that large. I'm sure we've had weekends where that many people came to Christ, but there wasn't a visceral demonstrated, raise a hand, come forward, text. Um, and it's not even Easter yet. So, and it, it's not even in comparison. I mean, I think another Easter, we had 32 responses. And when I went through all of them, it was like a bunch of 15 year olds who were trying to like be, <laughs> be bad basically. And they, oh were, they were bored at church texting in and right. it, it was like, come on. But oh, this is like legit. It's like legit people who want to know Jesus. Dude, so I, this morning I was going on all of our friends' churches, like their their speeds, and seeing what kind of response they got online, just just, just doing numbers. Yeah. It takes longer than you think. Yeah. But one of them I came across, First Street Church up in Fresno, while they were speaking, had 795 comments. Like people talking and, and responding to the sermon while they're speaking I mean, it's like a two-hour service. I'm like, first of all, how is anybody staying for two hours? But still, they're just in there commenting. I'm like, this, this, there is such a shift happening. Yeah. That's why I want to do these interviews. I'm like, I think the Christians, because that's the only people that are going to watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the Christians need to know. Hey, what's up? Hey, um, hi. Hey. I think they need to know, like, um, there's something happening here. Jump on board because. Yeah. God is moving. I think was Greg Laurie like four thousand people came to Christ. Yeah, Greg Laurie said he said uh, four thousand people come to Christ since the COVID, and th this 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 stat is nuts. Three hundred and ninety eight thousand people have watched his live stream in the last two weeks. Yeah. Three hundred and ninety eight thousand, dude. Yeah, there's there's a dramatic shift happening, and I I think I I think we're a part of history. I just don't know what it's going to look like. Here's, here's what I thought about last night as I was just kind of going to bed. I go, and yeah, what when 9 huh? Well, yeah, what do you think? So when 9-11 happened, I don't know if you remember. I do, yeah, I was the, college. The next Sunday, every church was full of people, right? Mm -hmm. Like just, they were standing room only. And the building I was in was like a 1,500 people building. People were standing on the sides. And we had nothing to give them like we were telling great sermons like but we didn't change anything we just said the normal sort of sermon worship and that was it there wasn't a um in the moment what are people needing what do they need right now what what they weren't like thinking about why this is happening and then within a few weeks it was all back to normal like it was a two three week max and it was normal again mm -hmm. and so i just thought about that going there's something different this time because the church has immediately responded and said, okay, this time let's be ready and let's go. Uh, for it. Good. Yeah. That's, that's what, good. I, that's what I'm seeing. 
It reminds me of like Luke 19 when Jesus talks about the parable of the talents, you know, like don't don't bury the treasure right now. Yeah. Know? So, dude, do you think do you think that uh, that like a, the other part of it is that's lasting so long? Like we're 9 11 was like a moment. Like this has been now now we're in week three. Is that part of it too? That's a great point because it's taken some of our churches a while to get the technology and all that stuff. Yeah. We've had a three weeks to sort of like figure out some stuff. Yeah. Whereas 9-11 was, you had basically three weeks to make a difference and that was it. Yeah. So this is probably a couple of months of going, all right, there's a shift. How are we going to do online Bible studies? How are we going to do this? How are we going to have like all of our meetings? And when people come to Christ, do it through Zoom. Like we're figuring it out and we're getting a little bit more time. So yeah, that's definitely part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. There, there's definitely a spiritual shift that's happening and a lot of people are praying. So God is, God is really stirring, I think in a powerful way. All right. Last question. And the, yeah. we'll shoot this one out to whoever might be watching. Sure. How are you continuing to be the hands and feet of Christ? And more importantly, what would be your message to those watching do this? You know, we don't have to change the world, but do this to your neighborhood. How can we be the hands and feet of Christ right now while we're in quarantine? Well, I'll, I'll definitely take, a, um, put my wife on, you know, kind of the the, 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 the the example right now, because, you know, our, our neighbor who we've been praying for, for seven years since we moved in here, I've shared the gospel with her. Uh, I've brought her to church. She's, she's basically told me no. She was in the ER a couple of days ago. Um, for a different kind of flu, actually, for bronchi for just general bronchitis, came out, and um, we've we've just really asked God for opportunities to talk about Jesus with her right now. And um, Krista bought her some some toilet paper. Sounds so random, but got her a thing of, of TP. And I, I would say that that's been one of the ways, just practically, is just being thoughtful of the opportunities um, around us, and in my and obviously. Uh, what was really cool is I prayed two times in, in one day for the opportunity. And the next thing I know, I see an ER, uh, a, uh, emergency vehicle outside our house, taking her to the ER. And it was at that moment that I got to say to the son who's picking his mom up or, or driving alongside the ambulance, um, hey, we're praying for you. We need to talk so that we can help however you, however you need in the future here. And so that was really cool. Um, cool. Just in terms of like my own personal prayer list that I've been praying for her for seven years. And this is as close to a sense of urgency that I've seen in their eyes um, in those seven years. And I've, again, explained the gospel two times now in those seven years. And, uh, and there wasn't any kind of openness to it. So now it feels like it's really cool. Uh, outside of that, um, I'm discipling seven guys. There is a, a group of guys I disciple. Uh, we're part of a, a, a ministry that I've kind of organized called uh, Disciple Making Communities. And it's a group of seven guys. We meet on Zoom. And over, over a course of one, one session a month, um, I'm training them and teaching them how to um, communicate their faith and make followers of Jesus among people who don't know Jesus yet. And then in between sessions, I do an online mentoring with those guys, each one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm telling you, man, the, the times together um, have been in, insanely fruitful. You know, um, I, I, just, I just haven't had, um, there's just been a sense of momentum in that that has been incredibly refreshing. Um, and probably one of the, the highlights for me the last two weeks has seen that, that get going, which has been really cool. So are you saying people should start groups like that or should they join yours? Like they can jump into yours? Yeah, no, but well, mine, mine, I mean, mine, it's, it needs to be smaller for each person. You know, I'm yeah. going to do, I'm going to do another uh, cohort in July. Um, but I just take these, these guys through kind of four or five sessions on kind of deeper discipleship and how to do that. I would say for anybody out there to, uh, who's a pastor is this is the time to equip people if you haven't yet and take advantage of that, you know, to yeah. do that. And for anybody who is maybe not in ministry, uh, man, right now is a time to really cling to people who are hungry to go deeper with Jesus and to encourage each other and then go actually out and do it and share with each other what's happening when you get back together, you know? Yeah. And don't, don't, 
don't quickly gloss over the discipleship because what you're doing is when people connect, you then put them into that discipleship plan. Yeah. You're helping to lead someone. Um, I'm willing to do that too. So my email is David Hopper at friends.church. You can come into one of my discipleship groups. Aaron, you want to put yours out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can just Aaron O at friends.church. And, uh, and then when we have another cohort, love to have anybody who wants to join. It'd be great. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. I love it. I'm also just doing a couple of Bible studies online that are just about praying over each other and then yep. reading a little bit of the Bible. So if you guys want to do that, and I yep. forgot I was going to open up with a verse. So this is the verse that I have for today. Yeah. This is Matthew 6, 19. Um, I think it fits. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Good. Yeah, it's good. Hey, I'll say this too. If anybody, I have an online, uh, it's called the Discovery Bible Study. For anybody who doesn't know, know the doesn't know much about the Bible and is wants to explore it, uh, Tuesday nights, I have an open Zoom call. People can just jump on and we go through the Gospel of Mark. We just read it out loud and it's a safe place for people to explore and discover scripture. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll send that to you and you guys can, um, if they, anyone wants to join, they can do that too. How is it open Zoom? Are you putting on Facebook and they can click in? Uh, no, I, I mean, I have a password and stuff like that. I send it to them, you know, once I know who it is. Uh, email you yeah. and then it's open. Oh, that's cool. So, okay. Yeah, so people want to just want to join, they can just email me and I'll send them the information. Okay, yeah. I might hop in that. That's awesome. Yeah, really absolutely. cool. Um, tomorrow, if you're watching this, is Greg Curtis from East Side. We're going to do good yeah. news and hear what's happening over there. That guy's awesome. That's going to be at two, though. Cool. Can't do it till two. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. This was awesome. Thanks, David.